art and crime, art is representative of our highest intellectual and spiritual aspirations, whereas crime is the expression of our lowest motives and basis acts. And it gives the viewer the impression that crime is somehow contained and controllable and comprehensible because we're able to make this artwork out of it. The desire for the high life, however you define it, is something that drives a great many people in this world. And it's one of the things that drives them to the next form of crime against art, forgery. Certainly forgers are motivated by money. They all realize great financial gain from what they do. But to a man, I think, they will tell you the first motivation and the strongest motivation is revenge. There's art which is alleged to be blasphemy or sacrilege. There's art that is alleged to be obscene. And then there's art which is allegedly treason. For a long, long time in Western culture, we subscribe to the belief that there's another separation between the creator and the creation. You know, that you don't judge the work by the life or the life by the work. So, okay, Picasso, big womanizer, so what? You know, William de Kooning, heavy drinker, so what? But at what point <laughs> does it begin to matter? Is there any point at which it begins to matter? What kind of person made the image? Soho Sins is, first of all, of course, the story of a murder. In this case specifically, the murder of a collector's wife. And he feels himself responsible for his wife's death. He stumbles into the police station and says to them, Hello, my name is Philip Oliver, and I believe I murdered my wife. Well, it's the ambiguity of that I believe that is at the heart of the story. We all have to drink our poison <laughs> with a smile. So with that, I will thank you very much and say, uh, enjoy your reading. <laughs>